In this video, we're gonna transfer files using SSH. Now I've done some other SSH videos out there. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with SSH and just how to get around, uh, I highly recommend checking those out. And also I'll leave a link to the ultimate SSH guide, whether it's setup, transferring and all that down in the description. I created an article just as a good reference so you can bookmark that. Uh, check that out as far as the setup, getting around and transferring, um, but all that will be in the description. But in this video, we're talking about strictly transferring files using SSH. So with all that, uh, let's not talk too much. Let's get right into actually the transferring, and we're going to go over both Windows and also Linux. Uh, check the description for timestamps if you want to skip directly to Linux or Windows portion of this video. Just click on that. So with all that said... This video is sponsored by CDN77, a content delivery network chosen by the European Space Agency and CentOS. They have over a 14 terabits per second global network, real-time technical support, and 100% transparent pricing. And that is just a few reasons why Hubble images are delivered around the Earth using CDN77. Okay, so starting off here on our Arch Linux-based system, uh, if you're on a Debian-based system or on GNOME, most of these steps are pretty much the same. I'll, I'll show you kind of as we explore it how we're going to browse. So now I'm using the Dolphin browser, but I'm going to show you Dolphin, and I believe I also have uh, a Nautilus on here for those GNOME people out there. So this is the two types of browsers, and I'm just going to show you how to uh, basically you use SSH to transfer files. So I have a machine that I have for Minecraft and I wanna transfer some files around in there. Uh, so let's get into actually connecting. So in Dolphin, uh, same thing, you just go up to the, the location bar or address bar and go SFTPP or SFTP. And then we're just gonna put our username after a forward slash forward slash and put administrator. And then we're going to put the IP of the machine. It'll prompt for a password. And then we enter our password and hit OK. And then it'll bring us into our home directory on this machine. Now, the cool thing is you can browse this whole machine. So I know OPT Minecraft is where most of those files reside. And I can come in here and change things around as I'm that user. So this is as if I'm in there on SSH, but if I need to drag and drop files into here, I can totally do that um, with Dolphin. Now the same thing can be done in uh, Nautilus. So uh, most people don't have their Nautilus set up this way. If you don't, I highly recommend doing it because I don't like the, the other way where you don't have the actual full thing, but everyone has this other locations down here and you can simply just do it through here as well. SFTP colon forward slash forward slash and then 192.168.69.6. Uh, be sure to put the username at that. And when you connect, you simply put that in and voila, you are there. So this is both uh, file systems almost works identically. That should cover probably 90% of the Linux file systems out there. I'm sure Nemo and some of the more obscure file managers uh, can easily do this as well. So that covers the GUI portion of it. Just logging in, it's as simple as SFTP. Now, when I say SSH, there's really two types of protocols I want to talk about. There's SFTP, which is what I just showed. It's more of an interactive back and forth, if you will. If you interrupt a transfer, you can resume the transfer. This is also just a hair slower than what's called SCP. Both use SSH, port 22 uh, by default. And uh, they're actually uh, a little bit faster on SCP uh, because it doesn't have that resumability to it on transfer. So uh, good person to note. Personally, I, I don't care which one I use. I, I Usually if I'm in terminal already, um, I can transfer files directly using SCP. It, it sometimes is a little faster in my opinion. If I don't have my file browser up or I don't have a bookmark, sometimes I'm just like, oh, it's a one-off file to a remote server. I'll just use SCP. But with that said, let's uh, go ahead and do a transfer. So let's say I want to transfer 
the stream files, uh, stream titles at the bottom here. You go SCP. The source is actually going to be stream, but the source could also come from your remote server too. So uh, keep that in mind. This is just source and destination. So it's SCP space source, which is either your local file, and you can also do like a full uh, path name for this. So you can go home, Titus, stream titles. This would be the source. And then for the destination, you need to put your username, which would be administrator, at our address 69.6 and then colon and then you can put a, a little tidily there to do just your home directory this would transfer it right into your home or if you had a specific location that the administrator users have privilege to and owns you can also put it there which i know opt minecraft it does have so i could put this stream titles directly over there so let's hit enter type in our password and it transferred that over. So if I look at this and I do just a listing right here, you'll see the stream titles right on this portion. So it actually transferred that over. So I can just remove this. And this is a basic command line transfer. Um, just remember SCP space source space destination. Um, and that's basically it. Now, Let's exit back, and I'm going to show you that syntax one more time. Now, on this, I could easily take from the remote server and put the administrator at the IP colon and then the actual path name like this and put it at the very beginning and then put like a tidally. So it can look something like this. Now, this would transfer uh, the whole Minecraft server or folder name if I wanted to transfer that much. But let's say there was a config file, like I think the eula.txt file. I think that is there. And now if we look at our home directory, we'll have, uh, let's just do a listing. And you'll see the eula text right there. So if I, I cat eula text, you'll see that that has all of that and accept the end user license for Minecraft. Um, but this is just a basic configuration back and forth using the terminal. Same thing can be done in Windows now. Um, so we'll jump over to Windows, um, but overall for Linux, I really enjoy the ease and native ability to do all these transfers. No third-party downloads are really necessary. Uh, it comes with SSH and SCP built in and SFTP if you're using uh, your simple file browser like this. Now, you can also put it in your places and your bookmarks on the side of whatever file, if it's Dolphin or Nautilus, it, it simply doesn't matter. They both do the same thing. They just look a little different. So um, with that, let's uh that's pretty much linux in a nutshell transferring files through ssh so we'll open up our web browser here and we're going to need a couple utilities that we're going to use for this tutorial now a lot of the native stuff uh there is some aspects of command line and powershell that you can use but i don't like them mainly because they suck and what i like is just to download third-party utilities when it comes to windows there's two real utilities here that are really needed is putty and winscp these types of things are used all the time by me when i'm on a windows box and i'm transferring files back and forth or utilizing ssh often i really like both these utilities so i usually always go to night night and just download both of them straight out of the box it's a very simplistic install they're very small utilities and uh, very easy to set up. So it usually takes no time at all. I use Night Night just because uh, it goes ahead and accepts everything for me and installs it. So it, it makes it uh, quite a bit easier. So um, that's what I use. Right there, we've installed them. As you saw, no time at all. We'll open this up and we'll go ahead and create a couple things. So there's SFTP we just talked about, or we have SCP transfers too. This is one of the cool things about WinSCP and why I like it more than FileZilla. You saw FileZilla you can also use on that list. However, I like WinSCP just a bit better. Um, I used FileZilla for a long time, but I find WinSCP is a little bit faster and also it has a cleaner interface in my opinion. So 
let's go ahead and sign into our Minecraft server and see what we have here. And this is just, I use Minecraft as just a, a default, but really anything will work here. So we'll go ahead and save this, save password, okay, and log in. You accept the key and we're on the server and we can go ahead and browse around. Now, whatever user you're logged in to, you have permissions as that user. So if you try and drag and drop a whole bunch of stuff under your root folder and you're not as logged in as root, it's not going to work uh, because you're logged in as your user. So very important to understand the permissions of Linux when doing SSH, but um, that's a whole different a video. If you're having trouble transferring stuff, just make sure you have ownership of the user you are used to log in via SSH. So here is this entire directory through WinSCP. This is the GUI version, which is also very good. Now for the command line aspect of this, um, there's something called PSCP. Now it usually comes with PuTTY. Um, and this one, let's go ahead and pull up. I, I think the PuTTY folder has this so we'll go ahead and open up the file location and th that's that pscp right here so if we open this so with pscp from the actual program files putty directory here we can actually use this just like we use the scp command in uh, linux so let's go ahead and do that and we'll transfer this readme file back and forth so uh, just to demonstrate a command line now not very many windows users are going to be using command line so we, we'll just use powershell for this and we'll just go c d c colon we'll go to the putty directory do a listing and you'll see that pscp command so we'll do pscp um, for the source we'll do readme and for the destination, we're going to do the same thing we did in Linux. So we'll do administrator at 192.168.69.6 colon. And we'll go ahead and pop this into the home directory. Go store key and cache. Yes. We'll type our password in. And it transferred that file. So now if we SCP directly into that or SSH directly into that, uh, we'll actually see that file. And let's go ahead and do that. We'll just pull up our GUI just so you can see it. Now it put us into the OPT directory and we'll just go back here, go into home, just to show you a little browsability. And it actually transferred it as this, uh, which let's open it. And this is the putty readme file we just transferred. Now I made an er error when I actually transferred this file into the home directory um, and forgot to name it. So this was a little bit off with uh, saying the dot backslash readme. That messed up the file name. I probably should have put just readme.txt and then into this directory. Um, but you know, Tomato, tomato, you got the idea. Not very many people are going to use PSCP. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. That is the GUI version and then the PowerShell slash command line version in Windows. You can do it both. When it comes to computers, whatever you want to use, whatever operating system you want to use, it can be done. You just got to learn it. So there you have it. That is all of the SSH transferring of files. There's ways to do it both in the terminal or command line and then also uh, just using a graphic user interface. And you just pick your poison on this one. I personally, a lot of times, end up just using the terminal, but I, I know most of the population would rather just use their built-in file explorer, uh, especially when it comes to Linux. It's just right there and just typing SF tp colon forward slash and then your your server name and off you go it, it's just awesome in that direction however sometimes this can be a little bit of a slow process and using terminal straight sap does give you a slight bump in performance um, but you know to each his own i wanted to give you the choice to figure out which one you like the best and you can compare it on your own time and and, and 
either way, you know, you'll always find a way to make it work, which is, is pretty awesome. But with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Did I miss anything? Was there any other tools that you might recommend? I know I left out FileZilla for this, but uh, I like WinSCP a lot more. And honestly, if you're on Linux, just use the native tools. I, I figure those are just as good, if not better. So with all that, um, let me know if you have any other thoughts down in the comments. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.